Hi there, I'm Liz Jones, and if you're watching this, you probably already know who I am. Um, I am Liz Jones Wellness, and I'd like to invite you to join me on my website to get further newsletters on wellness, empowerment, health, fitness, and yoga tips. And my website is www.lizjones.co. So I encourage you to go on there, follow me, or go to my Facebook page and follow there as well. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about spring renewal. A lot of people, you know, as of the first of the year, they do a New Year uh, revolution where they want to uh, change their lives. Um, also, they do kind of a spring rejuvenation, and spring is always known for being a time that we renew and refresh ourselves um, in different religions. It's known for a time of rebirth and renewal as well. Um, also spring, you know, the mother nature starts to bloom flowers and uh, things come alive every spring. Um, this past weekend was our vernal equinox and that's when um, the spring begins and the, when darkness and light are equal on the same day. And it's a time for us to renew and refresh the energy that we have in our lives and our homes. And sometimes it can mean our careers and other things that we have going on. Uh, everybody knows, you know, spring cleaning is the traditional thing that we hear about people doing. And now as we learn more and more about health and wellness, we also hear about spring cleanses that people are doing for their health uh, as well. Uh, this is also a time of energetic uh, cleansing, a good time to do meditation, to implement meditation if you haven't, or to re-implement it if you've let it fall by the wayside. Uh, for some people, they like to pray. Other people like to do silent meditation. Some people maybe would be interested in using guided imagery for that. And it's also a really good time to be envisioning the future that you'd like to have. Um, just recently, we also had an eclipse portal. So if you are somebody who's into astrology and how things in our lives happen along with the flow of the planets and the moons, um, the eclipse portal was a time where there was a lot of high energy and that future plans were supposed to start to come to fruition. So things that we've been working on for the past six months or more of our lives we're supposed to start to uh, appear into our lives. And it's also a lot of, um, they always say, you know, babies are born uh, when there's a full moon. And we had a calf born in our yard last night on the full moon, which was uh, kind of a cool little uh, incident uh, that went along with it. And he was, or she, we aren't, we aren't quite sure yet because the mom's still being real protective, uh, bright red calf to our black herd of cows. So that was kind of a, a cool little uh, thing that happened along with that full moon last night. So anyway, right now you really want to focus on what you want to have in your lives, you know, spending time writing out your dreams and your aspirations and taking those dreams and aspirations and writing them out as goals and the steps that you're needing to take to achieve those goals. So maybe you're ready for a career change or you're wanting to move your relationship to the next step or maybe you have a health issue that you need to address, or maybe like a lot of us, you have multiple things that are going on. And so now is really the time to do that, to really step into that, that new reinvention of yourself and your life, whatever area of life that is you'd like to focus on. Um, for me, I'd like to share a little bit about my personal life. Those of you that know me well, I know some of this. Those of you that are new to Liz Jones Wellness, uh, I will share a little bit about my, my personal history. Um, I now live in Wiley, Texas, and I came here from Woodville, Wisconsin, went to school in New Richmond, Wisconsin, um, and I had lived there for 35 years um, after we had moved from New England um, when I was five years old. Um, I have a son, Jordan, who will turn 26 in oh, like a week and a half from now, and I live with Aaron and our 15-year-old, my bonus child, Brittany, and uh, we again live in Texas, and uh, like I said, five years ago, decided to make that big change and come from Wisconsin, um, where I'd lived for 35 years since I'd been five, where I went to school my whole life, um, and where I'd built my home and I raised my son. 
And I just knew, you know, somewhere deep inside of me, it was time to go. And a lot of people thought, you know, there was some big incident that had happened that, you know, made me decide to, you know, run off from Wisconsin. But really, it was, you know, my son was 21 at the time. He was in his third year of college. Um, I had lived in Wisconsin his entire life um, and raised him there specifically so he could be around um, his other side of the family, you know, raise him around his grandfather on his other side, um, who he was very, very close to. And I was always very grateful um, for him being in my son's life um, while he was alive. And um, I was able to do a lot um, while I was in Wisconsin. You know, I built a house when I was 29 years old, um, lived in, you know, the country on five acres of land, you know, even having been a single mom and we were very, very poor. But I was able to, you know, go to school and, you know, but build us a house uh, while I worked full time, uh, you know, paid my mortgage on time for the 10 years that we lived in that house and put myself through two degrees and attend law school as part of a dual degree program I was in, um, was an endorsed legislative candidate in 2010 because of my involvement in women's issues and public policy work um, and just really felt like there was something I could do more um, for my community by being more involved in public policy. And obviously I did not get elected, but it was still in many ways a very successful campaign. And um, and so then after the election, uh, you know, as I said, I did not get elected. So I decided, you know, what was I going to do next? And it just made sense for me at that time to make a big change. And I just knew there was something more that I needed to be doing. Um, I had previously been an executive director of domestic abuse programs, and I had always thought this really what I wanted to do with my life was, you know, help women who had been abused and help children and families, and to use my degrees to run nonprofits and help people that were in need. Um, and along the way, while I was working and going to school, I also had become a yoga teacher and a personal trainer because of my interest in wellness and because of my deep belief that wellness is something that's holistic and that people need to be healed from a very multi-level position that, you know, you can't just do triage work. You can't just uh, take somebody out of a domestic abuse situation and not address all the other things that need to be healed and expect that there's going to be significant lasting change in their lives. And so, you know, during that time of my life, I had done everything that I really wanted to do with my life, but I just felt something was not fulfilled and that there was something more I needed to do and that it was just time for me to go. And, you know, it was very hard for me to put my house up for sale because, first of all, it was not a good time market-wise to sell a house. Um, and I was very proud of that house. I, you know, loved, you know, living where we did. I loved that I was able to provide that for my son. Um, and having started out as a very poor single mom, you know, that was something I was really afraid to give up because I was scared I was never going to be able to have that again. Um, but I knew, I just knew and I was drawn to going somewhere else. I knew what I was supposed to do was elsewhere. And as I said, my son was grown. He was in his third year of college. And it was just time. And, you know, although, like I said, I had set out to do everything I meant to do while I was there, I just had a big part of me that was not yet fulfilled. And... I wanted things in my life like deeper friendships, and although I've had a somewhat successful career, it's had its ups and downs, um, there was more that I wanted to do, and I never felt um, through my career that I had any deep sense of security or any deep fulfillment in my daily work, and um, just really you know, wanted, you know, although I was very proud of the work that we've done in domestic abuse work, I never felt that we made enough of a significant difference. And it was I, so much more that I knew I could do. So I knew it was time to make a change in my career. And I wanted to help people and create wellness in people's lives. 
And I wanted to bring the gifts that I knew I had into the world. And I started off, um, you know, again, part of my personal story. You know, I was a high school dropout, um, lived on my own when I was 16 um, as a senior and dropped out of high school, um, was pregnant when I was 17 and was able to finish high school um, with my son by my side, you know, when he was a baby, um, you know, and I remember getting my diploma from high school in the mail and saying, hey, look, Jordan, mommy graduated from high school. And that always is kind of one of those bittersweet moments where it's like, hey, yay, I did it. But, you know, where I feel like I kind of missed out on a few things um, also. And, um, you know, later on, I was able to go to college um, when I was 21, and I started off as uh, an art major and a dance minor because I had no idea what I was good at or what I wanted to go to school for. Um, you know, all I knew was that I liked to dance and I was good at art, and so I started college as an art major because I knew I had to do something and not be a cocktail waitress or work in a truck stop my whole life. So I knew I had to do more so we could have a good life. Um, so I went to college um, while I continued to cocktail waitress and uh, work in a truck stop and model and, you know, found better and better jobs. You know, the more college I had, the better jobs I got. Um, you know, eventually I changed my degree to communication because I also loved to write and it was something that just came real natural to me. Uh, so the communication degree seemed to make a lot more sense. And then later I was able to go on uh, to get a master's degree in organizational leadership and strategic management, um, as well as, you know, attending law school as part of a dual program and, um, you know, have my first year of law classes to go along with that. Um, and as I said, you know, I intended to run domestic abuse shelters and had done that for a few years, but just felt, you know, that we hadn't made enough of a difference, you know, that I, I have so much respect and admiration for the people that still are in the trenches doing that work and working to end domestic violence and even more so for the people, you know, the families that end the cycle of violence in their lives and they create a better life for themselves. And there, there are people who have success stories and I'm so, so proud of them and uh, so much respect. Um, for them, but um, I just never felt like we were making enough of a difference. And, you know, there was just, you know, children that you would see um, come back through shelter um, that were continued to be uh, exposed to rape and to seeing abuse, and then they would go on and be the next generation of abusers. and you know, they would continue to have that trauma in their families and we'd uh, get women out of the line of fire for 30 days and they would go back, right back to their abuser and, uh, or go back and end up in another abusive relationship. And I just felt like there needed to be a better way to help people. And in my experience, um, the environments that, that most people that work in domestic abuse programs are working in are very toxic environments. And I just really felt like it's almost impossible to bring healing to the families there without first addressing that internal trauma that goes on in the workplace. And I, you know, again, the, I think the work that's done there is so important, but there's so many things that are missing there, both from that workplace wellness perspective and from how we need to help people heal. And so I got burned out quickly and I got really angry about, you know, the whole situation and felt really helpless as to, you know, how are we even able to make a difference? So... I just knew there was more that I could do. I had taught a lot of women's empowerment and self-esteem workshops, um, a lot of yoga classes that I've te taught and, um, and personal trained people for years around my, my full-time jobs. And, you know, for me, that's where I really saw healing happen for people. And, you know, I wanted to be able to take my business experience and my education in organizational leadership and help people heal. And so, anyway, long, well, long story, still long, I guess. I 
um, made this video a lot longer than I intended to, but that's really what brought me to Dallas. Um, I came to Dallas because my older brother lived down here with my nephew, Pharaoh, who was two at the time, and I wanted to be able to help out with him. Um, so I just, I made the decision and put my house on the market and literally within a couple of weeks, uh, loaded up a U-Haul, packed up my house and came down, uh, to Dallas, uh, towing a 17 foot U-Haul with my car behind it and my hundred pound dog in it with me. Um, never driven a truck and trailer before that, but I just really felt like I was being compelled to make that change in my life. And, you know, it was a really scary time, but it really, I'm very grateful for the life that I've had here in Dallas. Um, and I just think, you know, I worked really hard once I got here. I actually came to Dallas without even having a job set up. I just came down and got an apartment set up, went back, got my dog and my things and my car and drove down and have been here ever since. Um, you know, so again, you know, just the, the point being, you know, in a time of change, this really, you know, for, for you or for me is a, a very standard time when people are going through changes in their lives. And so although it may be very scary, there's a lot of opportunity that's out there. And sometimes going into that unknown can be a very big, scary step. But I think you know, really focusing on what it is you want to create is how you're going to come out in the long run, you know, to the life that you're really meant to be living. And, you know, again, I'm always really glad, you know, that I came to Dallas and, you know, love Wisconsin too and, you know, miss some of the things about being there. Um, don't see my son as much as I'd like to, but um, again, my life in Dallas has been pretty good and, you know, going through a lot of transition myself right now, um, working to uh, build my wellness business. And uh, again, you know, really want to encourage you if you're listening to this, you know, to think about, you know, how you are going to approach your spring uh, your renewal time, that rebirth time that comes for all of us, you know, how you want to manifest things into your life that you really want to happen. You know, what are you being drawn to? And, you know, if you need some assistance, some coaching with that, I am here uh, to help you with that. Uh, my email is liz at lizjones.co. My website is www lizjones.co and you can also find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all those places and if you are on Facebook there is an article on there that has all the links to that as well. So anyway thank you for listening and again I'm Liz Jones with Liz Jones Wellness.